Good evening. My name is Kim Pickett, and I just wanted to ask a question. Have you ever thought about what your purpose is in life? And when you came to a conclusion what it was, you were hesitant about pursuing that. Well, I have someone today who's wanting to share with you her skills. She's sexy, provocative, and a little risque. Her name is Paris Love. And just wanted to share with you a little bit about her. If you will, Paris Love is an upcoming author in Chicago, Charlotte area who is breaking into the literature world with a vengeance. An entrepreneur, businesswoman, and member of Carolina Dimes Motorcycle Club. Paris has manifested an outlet of her creativity and fun nature by creating a novel of entertainment and suspense for enjoyment. Join her on her journey to profound success by supporting her efforts and appeasing to your darkest thoughts forbidden pleasure. Without further ado, I want to introduce you to Paris Love. say thank you for everyone for coming out and being so patient and waiting. I know um, it gets, you know, a little hectic out here sometimes. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm from Gary, Indiana originally. I was spent six years in the military after I graduated from high school. And I moved to Charlotte. And once I moved to Charlotte, I, um, I always wrote poems and I wrote um, in my journal a lot. And I never really thought that I was going to write a book. That was never in my mind to do something like that. But uh, it all started when one of my girlfriends told me, um, I said, well, I'm going to write this story. and I'm going to make up these characters. And she was like, OK. And I started telling them about it. And as I told them about it, they started telling me, well, I want to do this. And I want to do that. And put me in. And I said, no, I'm not telling you nothing else. I'm just going to write. So the story started out um, about the three young ladies, Lucky Blue, Paris Love, and Lolita Marcus. And I got into the story, and it went like 50 pages long. And I stopped writing. And so my girlfriend asked me last, about two years ago, she asked me, what happened to that book you were writing? And I was like, um, I don't, I still have it. Why? She said, well, I had a vision of you, and you was on uh, Oprah talking about you wrote these books and all this stuff. And I said, was there money involved? And she was like, <laughs> He's like, oh, you had a lot of money. I said, let me get the typing. So I, I, I finished the book. It's called Skeletons to See to the Bone. Um, the cover was designed by me because I was thinking in my mind of a, you know, the skeleton in your closet. And I had the three ladies in the rows, and it had love, death, and, and you know, everything like that in it. So I thought that it was a good cover. But um, I want to read one of the poems that I wrote, and then I'll read some of the I just wrote this poem like maybe three weeks ago, and it's called G-Spot. My eyes was closed tightly as I clutched the pillow slightly with my teeth. I could feel his breath on the back of my neck as he kissed me gently. He said, can you feel me, baby? Am I in too deep? I said no as I dug my fingers deeper into the sheets. I grabbed the fist full as he moved back and forth. He stroked stronger and more force. Turn over, he said, as he flipped me like a Sunday pancake. Thinking it was over until my insides started to shake. I screamed, wait a minute, I think I got a pee. Before I could say another word, he was grinding on top of me. The sensation grew stronger with each stroke. I felt the warmth of my insides deep in my throat. He continued to do battle with the feelings that was coming over me. And then I bust, oh shit, what the fuck was that? I stood up to shake it off. I got dizzy instead. I had to sit down quickly on the edge of the bed. It felt like everything was rushing to my head. I looked over at him as he laughed at me. Baby, it was your G-spot I hit, not your P. read a little bit um, out of the book. This is uh, chapter seven in the book. This is actually after um, the girls just came back from opening a grand opening club they had in Miami. They had a grand opening and then they was coming back on the airplane. It was actually Lucky and Lolita returning from their flight. Tying 
sat behind the wheel of Luckley's BMW. The luxury car had leather interior, wood grain, navigation system, and the was fully loaded. Tanya said loudly, I should leave that bitch at the airport. Just who does she think I am? Her fucking maid and chauffeur? Tanya looked at her and looked herself in the mirror on the visor. She could see that her face had aged and that she had dark circles around her eyes from not getting enough sleep. The very thing that others take for granted, like sleep, was a difficult task for Tanya because all she could think about was getting lucky back for what she did to Ty. Tanya's cell phone rang and as she answered, yeah, I'm on my way to the airport now. Just have everything ready. We are going with the original plan. Yes, I said everything is ready. Tanya hung the phone up and made another call. Yes, do you have the cabin ready for Mr. Ron Brown? You will leave the keys under the mat on the porch next to the old rocking chair? Thanks. Tanya hung up the phone, opened the garage, and backed out of Lucky's driveway. When Tanya arrived at the airport, she saw Lucky standing at the baggage claim entrance with all her bags and smiling like the world belonged to her. Tanya pulled up to the curb, popped the trunk, and got out of the car. How was the grand opening, Lucky? Lucky started telling Tanya all about the party and how it was the bomb and how everybody and their brother was there and so on and so on until Tanya tuned her out while she put the bags in the trunk of the car. Lucky finally shut her mouth and Tanya was so relieved because it just could, she just could not stand her whining ass mouth anymore. They drove down 85 North as Tanya got off on Betty's Ford Road exit and headed toward the hood. She pulled up in the back of Rudine's. Before Lucky could set, ask a, Tanya any questions, they were stopping. Three men jumped out of a black Cadillac and opened the door to the passenger side of Lucky's car. One of the men pulled a gun to her head and demanded that she get out of the car. A second man ran, ran around to Tanya's side, pulled the gun on her and told her to get out the car. The two of them stood there shaking and wondering what was going on. The man, <coughs> the man, Tanya, the man that made Tanya get out of the car got behind the wheel of Lucky's Beamer and closed the door. The other two men grabbed Lucky and Tanya and threw them in the back seat of the Cadillac. When they got in the car, Ron Brown was sitting in there looking at Lucky with a crazy grin on his face. I bet you thought you got rid of me because your bitch ass friends had me thrown out of the club. But I have been watching your stupid ass ever since you called the popos on me. He did not say anything to Tanya. They just looked at each other, and the two other men got in the front seat of the car. The driver of the Cadillac signaled to the man driving Lucky's car to pull off. Ron put duct tape around over Lucky's mouth and her hands. He covered her face with a black cloth and drove, and the driver pulled off. Lucky could hear Ron talking to the driver in the front seat, telling him to go towards the Interstate 40 to Black Mountain. Lucky was trimming. She did not know what, was, what to do because Ron looked like he was on something and he was never so afraid in, in her life. She was never so afraid in her life, I'm sorry. Tanya leaned over and whispered in Ron's ear, I have everything ready. My cousin used, a, used to have a cabin in a secluded area near Black Mountain. That has not been occupied for years. The key is under the old mat in the front of the door. Tanya had planned to kidnap Lucky for years, and she met Ron when he would come to visit Lucky in her office. After Lucky and Ron split up, Tanya contacted him. She paid him to help her with the kidnapping by convincing Ron that Lucky ruined his life just as she ruined hers, and revenge was the only way to make her pay for what she did. Thank you.